Hi guys, welcome to Empower, and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much, as usual, for watching my YouTube channel. So in this video, I wanted to respond to an email that I received from Katie. By the way, whose name has been changed to protect the innocent. But let me read you the email. Hello, Caroline. How's it going? First of all, I'd like to say that you are one of the most beautiful persons with a kind heart, and your videos have been my inspiration to become a good nurse. Aw, thank you. <laughs> I have been working as an RN for two and a half years now. I started off as a very shy and fearful nursing student, new grad nurse, to now team leader. However, no matter how much my coworkers say I'm a good nurse, there's always a negative voice preventing me from feeling confident and competent. Those coworkers who say that I'm good are the ones that have been working with me long enough to discover that. However, for new coworkers, I don't present myself confident enough to gain their trust. I think it's because of the way I carry myself, but deep down, I have the knowledge and critical thinking. Please help me. Is there a way for shy people to shine in our profession? So Katie, I'm so glad that you took the time to write this email to me because it's something that I struggled with and I know it's something that a lot of other people struggle with as well. So I do have good news for you. The game is winnable and it's an exciting game to play once you change the rules. So before I get into that, I just want to tell you a little bit about my story because a lot of people think that because I have a YouTube channel that that means that I'm not shy at all or I'm super outgoing. But I think that anyone that's actually worked with me has been kind of surprised at just how shy I can be sometimes. And I struggled with this too, Katie. There were times when I would be calling a rapid response for my patient and I'm one, the one that knows my patient the most. And because I wasn't being assertive with my communication or speaking fast, enough or being loud enough, um, people would jump in over me and it really bothered me and I felt like there was something wrong with me. There would also be other times when I would be communicating with other nurses or even nursing students and out of maybe a polite conversation, I would be agreeing with them, um, but then they would take that as I didn't really know what I was doing. So my politeness was being construed as ignorance. So I really did struggle with this a lot and I just wanna put it out there. When I started my YouTube channel, I did it out of a great concern for future nursing students and also of future nurses. I wanted to first of all warn nursing students of how hard nursing school could be and provide them with some great resources and I also wanted to create a positive environment for current practicing nurses and I didn't really see it out there so I felt like I needed to do something about that. So I didn't create the channel out of my boisterous uh, personality or anything like that. I, I, I did it out of a true feeling like there was a need for it. With that said, I've always been looking for ways to improve my communication skills and improve the way I can be perceived and the way I can perceive myself. So in my quest to want to become a better person, a better leader, a better nurse, I came across this book and it was called Good to Great by Jim Collins. And it was actually a business book, so I'm not really sure what led me to read it. I think maybe there was just a little blurb about it and I was like, you know what? If I can read about business owners who have truly transformed companies, then maybe it'll help me develop some skills that I've been wanting to develop. And when I listened to it, I was actually blown away because in this book, he actually gave example after example of people that I thought were great leaders because they were very um, well-spoken, they were invigorating, they had high standards, and I thought that that's really what I needed to do. I thought that I needed to be more compelling with my answers, more well-spoken, more maybe even just noticed at work. And when I read this book, it completely disrupted all of that. It gave so many different stories on how leaders that truly transform companies were described by words that were truly astonishing, like humble, meek, self-doubting. One person was quoted as saying he never stopped trying to be qualified for the job. So it really challenged me to think, you know, what was my perception of competence and what was my perception of success? And it honestly just opened up another door and I realized that I don't have to behave like everybody else to make a difference. I don't have to be the person that runs a code every time or 
at all. <laughs> I can just do my job quietly and be focused on doing the best that I can with that. So after reading this book, I still did research on how to communicate better, how to become a better speaker, how to improve myself in different ways. But I think what this did was it took off the pressure that I needed to be like something that I wasn't. It helped me sort of love myself a little bit more, knowing that no matter how I behave or how I communicate or how I'm perceived, that I can still be what he called was the highest level of leadership, which was a level five leader. So in conclusion, Katie, I just wanted to reiterate that the negative voice inside of your head could very well be the voice that's keeping you humble, meek, open to communication. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all have that voice inside of us, that voice that tells us that we're not enough or that we didn't do this right or that we messed up here. But challenging those perceptions with what you now know is true leadership can truly have a positive impact on your outlook. I believe what truly works in this profession is kind people that are consistent, loving, and approachable. So with this new view on true leadership, Katie, I really hope that you can find some gold nuggets to help you feel that you are enough. Because you are, and I know that. Because anyone that's so concerned to write me an email asking a complete stranger for advice, I know for sure is somebody that is so amazing and so caring. So in my opinion, just keep doing what you're doing, believe in yourself, and improve the strategies that you feel like you truly need to improve, but also embrace the way you are. And, and if you want to look into that book, it might be a good eye-opener for you. I don't know if it's completely necessary because it really has nothing to do with nursing, but in general, it's a great leadership book and it really opened my mind to helping me just be more um, accepting of myself and knowing that I don't have to be like that person in order to be a true leader. So I hope this helped you out a lot. And if you guys have any other video requests, you can always post it in the comments below or you can email me and I will do my best to make a video for you. All right guys, I love you so much and I will talk to you soon. Bye.